end of the first half with the uh, long scoring drive culminating with the five-yard run by Jim Pacenta. So the halftime score is 9-3, to three, Ohio State over Minnesota. Have some more scores for you here. Other action going on around the country this afternoon. In one of the real big games in the East, it is Pittsburgh over West Virginia, 14-3. to three. That's similar to the Ohio State-Michigan rivalry. Anytime you get West Virginia, Pitt, and Penn State involved there in that uh, coal mine rivalry, I guess they call it. It is Pittsburgh 14, West Virginia 3. That's at the half. In the fourth quarter now, Michigan is leading Illinois 35 to 7. At the half, Maryland leads Clemson 7 to nothing. In the second period, Georgia and Auburn. There's no score. In the fourth period, Notre Dame is leading 10th ranked Alabama 21 to 10. In the second period, Purdue leads Iowa 6 0. Second period, Wisconsin over Indiana, 7-0. Second period, Northwestern is leading Michigan State, 10-7. And in the third period, it is Temple over Dayton, 21-0. Let's pause now, 10 seconds, for station identification. Serving you 24 hours a day. This is Radio 93, W-E-O-L, in Illinois. The University of Minnesota marching band is now off the field. The teams have yet to come on, but they should be out here in just a few minutes as we're ready to go for the second half. I guess a quick analysis of the first half would have to indicate that Minnesota just gave us all we could handle. Uh, it took the Buckeyes just, uh, uh, well, it's about the last three minutes of the uh, second period. The Buckeyes were finally able to get an attack mounted, a consistent drive to where we could score and take that 9-3 to three lead. Uh, Minnesota was uh, doing quite well in uh, defensing the uh, sweeps and defensing the uh, the interior line. Jeff Logan and Pete Johnson and held to uh, uh, the uh, three and four yards of the crack. Neither one of them been able to get that big uh, 25 or 30 yard breakaway run that they which they have been able to come up with at least once or twice in each game so far this year. But Minnesota in the first half has defensed the running game quite well, causing Jim Pacenta to have to go to the air. And of course, as we mentioned, as far as Pacenta is concerned, he is six for ten passing this afternoon, and there were some key receptions by Bobby Howell that caused that drive to stay alive late in the second period. The Buckeyes are just about ready to come out on the field. The Gophers will be out shortly, and stand by for third quarter action after this message. University of Minnesota with the Minnesota Rouser as the Gophers are on the field. The Buckeyes are on the far side of the field, huddled around Coach Hayes and the rest of the coaching staff and getting ready to get the second half of action underway. The Buckeyes lead 9 nothing. The temperature starting to drop somewhat here in uh, Minneapolis, although we still have that bright sun coming right in our front box. And I might add Ken Coleman, it's a rather comfortable sun to have here with us today. Yes, it is, Bob, and I think uh, now the Buckeyes going out on the field, they'll be receiving, they will be to our left. And so, as you look at the radio, if you will, uh, it'll be from left to right. And I think we're going to see very early in this third quarter just exactly what the emotional factors will be in terms of the second half of this game. The Buckeyes lead it 9-3. to three. This is the last home game for these Minnesota seniors team is trying to salvage something out of a 6-3 season. They are close enough for an upset, and they know it. They battled the Buckeyes very tough in the first half, and they'll be going hammer and tongs here in the second. So it's going to be a question of whether the Ohio State team can wear them down, and that's something they've been able to do all season long. Getting ready for the kickoff, Paul Rogan, who came up with that big field goal in the first half for Minnesota. The Buckeyes with three men back deep, Logan Springs and Jackson. And the kick going downfield. It is taken at the seven by Springs. He fumbles it and he is racked at the ten yard line. He dropped the ball, he picked it up, and then he got nailed by Ed Burns, and I mean a savage tackle in there at about the 10-yard line. We will see exactly where the officials put the ball down in this sunshine, no excuse, believe me, but it is difficult to read exactly what yard line that ball is on. Let us call it the 12, 
and make it first down and 10 yards to go for Ohio State. And here they go. They had the ball 47 plays in the first half to Minnesota's 34. The center of the quarterback gives it to Logan, drives over left guard, and gets a yard, maybe a couple, and that's all he gets. As George Washington, the nose guard, and Steve Stewart, the left linebacker, make the tackle at the 14, it will be second down and eight. So we'll set them for you now. Mark Lang is at center, Jim Savoka and Bill Lukens, the guards, Chris Ward and Lou Petrini, the tackles, Jones and Hyatt are alternating at the split end, and Greg Storr is the tight end. The center has Logan and Johnson behind him, and Jimmy Harrell is the wide receiver. Harrell is off to the left side. And it is the center handing off Logan again, slicing on a counter over the left side, getting it out to the 19-yard line, and Steve Midbow is there to make the tackle on the play for the Golden Gophers, a man who has been very consistent all year. So at the 19-yard line, it is going to be third down coming up, and about two to go for the first down, two and a half maybe. It is House, Midbow, Freiburg, and Seisma up front. Stewart, Washington, and Hunt are the linebackers. Luckemeyer, Brown, Snyder, and Weber, the deep backs. And the handoff goes to, it appears to be Johnson. And he goes over the left side and goes to the 22-yard line. And the Weber is there to make the tackle on the play. The line of scrimmage had been on the 12. And will they measure? No, they don't need to. It is a first down. I might add, Ken, that was a key first down for the Buckeyes to get there to keep a drive going because uh, Minnesota's had got a little momentum here going for them. Yes, they do. That uh, initial tackle on Springs kind of lifted them some uh, more than even when they came out. Jones is split right. It is first and ten at the 22-yard line of the Buckeyes. The center handing off and running over the right side is Jeff Logan, and he is getting a yard. And George Washington playing a whale of a game here this afternoon makes the tackle at the 23, and it is second down and nine yards to go for Ohio State. They have a 9-3 to three lead as we start this third quarter of action here at Memorial Stadium in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I might mention, uh, Ken, with this bright sun and this carton turf they use here, the uh, white the white lines have been uh, uh, just about obliterated from use, and the sun bleaches it even more. It makes it really hard to see where they are. And now Pacenta, rolling left after faking, keeps the ball, and Jim Pacenta takes it across the 30-yard line and is out to the 34, and Michael Hunt makes the tackle at the 34-yard line, and that will be a first down for the Buckeyes on a second and nine. Pacenta kept the ball out to the 34, and it is first down and 10 yards to go. Twelve and a half minutes left to play here in this third quarter of action. And now the Buckeyes come out again into the eye formation. But center the quarterback with Johnson and Logan behind him. Harrell is in motion, going to the right. But center hands it off at his Logan over left tackle. And he is hit and taken down after a gain of one, maybe two. Steve Stewart, the junior left linebacker out of Richfield, Minnesota, making the tackle at the 36. And it will be second down and eight yards to go. Second and eight Buckeyes on their own 36-yard line. They started back on their 12. They've had it for seven plays. Hyatt comes out wide to the right. And for center, fakes, keeps, rolls right. May option does not. Taken at the line of scrimmage by Brian Snyder. Coming up from a safety position. A sophomore out of Washington, D.C., making the tackle. So the Buckeyes now, a third and eight situation at their 36-yard line. So another big play coming up. Orville Gilmore is going into the action. They take out a defensive end when he goes in there, Mark Merrill, and add an extra deep back, expecting that the Buckeyes will be throwing. Jimmy Harrell goes out wide to the left, and he has a defender out there with him in Bobby Weber. The center back to throw. Get some time. Now he's rushed. He fires it. It is incomplete. It was thrown out of bounds, almost intercepted, very nearly intercepted by Jim Ronan. And so they'll have to kick it. He was trying for Logan. It is fourth down eight, 36 yard line of Ohio State. And Tom Slidaney is going in there to kick it now. And Bobby Weber is going back as the sole safety man. And Slidaney will be kicking into a wind. He's got an average of 40.5 this afternoon in three kicks. And he is standing at his 22 as Doug Porter gets ready to snap for him. 
Here it is, a fine snap, a hard rush. He gets it away, a wobbly kick. Hits on the 40, he starts to roll backward, and a Buckeye touches it. And uh, we will pause now. The score, 9-3 Ohio State action continues 30 seconds. W. Perkins Incorporated, 40657 Butternut Ridge Road in Illyria. Back here in uh, Minneapolis and on the first offensive play, running straight ahead into the line, John Matthews, no gain, as he was stacked up in the middle by Ed Thompson and Kelton Dantzler. And Steve Midball got a hand on that kick of Sklazani's, and so it was a 25-yard kick at the 38-yard line of Minnesota. It is second down and 10 for the Golden Gophers now as they come into a T formation. They have a wide man out on the right side in Mike Jones. Back goes Tony Dungy to throw, and he fires it down on the right side, and he hits to Matthews. Matthews takes it up to the 49-yard line and is knocked out of bounds by Joe Allegro, and that should be enough for a first down for Minnesota. The Golden Gophers have Kevin Natty at center, Mark Slater and Greg Shaw for the guards. Terry Matula and Jerry Morrow are the tackles. Glenn Borklin and Jeff Ian are in there at the ends with Borklin the tight end. Matthews and Holmes, the running backs behind Dungy, and Mike Jones is the flanker. It is a first down up at the 49-yard line of Minnesota. First and 10. 11 yards on that play. And here they come in that T formation again. It is Dungy. Going back to throw. He fires it down on the left side. He hits. And it's the 35-yard line of the Buckeyes. It is Ron Fuller to make the catch. Mike Guest is there to make the tackle at the 35. And that will be another first down for the Golden Gophers of Minnesota. The Buckeyes defensively. Rodzinski, Bonamici, Beeman, and Kent. Dantzler up front with Brown in the middle. Cousin Owen Thompson of the backers. Roach, Allegro, Ray Griffin, and Mike Guest. Other deep men. Going out wide on the right now is Ron Kulis. In the eye formation, Tony Dungy brings them out. The quarterback at the 35-yard line of Ohio State. It is 9-3 Buckeyes. He fakes and he goes left on the option and keeps it. Mike Guest hits him and he bounces back. He might have got a yard or so. And he is knocked out of bounds as Bonamici and Dantzler were also there after he was hit initially. But his forward progress on the play Took him in there five yards to the 30, and it will be second down and five to go for the first. Second down and five. Dungy's looking a little more confident in the second half. They must have gone over their game plan in there and said, okay, fellas, this thing is now to the woods. You can still make a game of this, and, uh, and they're playing some pretty good ball right now. And it's the last gas kind of thing, too, Bob, before the home fans, and he's going to go all out with it. You can bet on it. It is second down. And a long five as he is into a long count. And now he takes it. He starts going back, rolling right, and firing up on the right side. He hits. In at the 20-yard line, it's Ron Kulis who makes the catch. He was hit then uh, immediately and moved backwards by Allegro and by Mike Guest. And he has moved the ball in. Let's see where they put it down. It looks like about the 21-yard line. And that's going to be another first down, Minnesota. And they are on the move. They started on the 38-yard line in their own territory. And they have moved the ball now just outside the 20-yard line of Ohio State. Holmes and Matthews are set in the eye behind the quarterback, Dungy. Dungy takes it. He's going back to throw, and he is hit and nailed for a big loss on this one. And the man who got him was Nick Bonamici, and I mean, he just came straight on. Looked like somebody might have even missed an assignment. Either that or Nick just knocked the door down because he really sacked him, taking him down back at the 26-yard line, a loss of five. It is second down and 15. The Buckeyes trying to stiffen here on defense. Holmes and Matthews are the running backs in behind the quarterback as they bring him out of the huddle. Kulis is coming out wide on the left, and he sends Mike Jones out on the right side. Dungy counting. Taking a long time with it here. He goes back again. He looks. He fires up the middle, and it is short. A hard rush. He was trying for Matthews, who had caught 12 going into this game. A man he's thrown to a lot this year. And Eddie Beeman got a lot of pressure to him, along with Aaron Brown. They are bringing that pressure in. And so it is now third down and 15 to go. 
at the 26-yard line. Kitzman has come into the lineup now for the Golden Gophers. We have uh, 8 minutes, 35 seconds left to play in this third quarter. Kitzman and Holmes are the setbacks. Jones is out wide on the left side. Tony Dungy, back of Kevin Nanny to center, takes the ball. He starts back, a heavy rush. He bumps into one of his own men, now fires long downfield. Incomplete at the 7. It looked like Ron Coolis might have caught the ball. He was a step behind Joe Allegro, and he couldn't quite hang on. It would have been a splendid catch. It would have been a super catch if he'd done it, but he couldn't. And now with a 4th and 15, they're sending the field goal unit in, and they send in Paul Rogan, who has kicked one already in this game, 49 yards. I think when uh, Kulis uh, looked around to get the ball, he had to look right into the sun first, and I think that was a real blessing for us because he was wide open. That would have been a six-pointer for sure. This a 37-yard yard line try, a 47-yard kick. It is in the air, and it is off to the right and no good. 9-3 Buckeyes. We continue in 30 seconds. This is Ken Coleman with Bob Connors in Indianapolis. It is nine to Minneapolis. It is nine to three Buckeyes. And here's Pacenta rolling right, coming back and over the tackle on the 20-yard line. Pacenta going out to about the 27, maybe the 28-yard line. And Steve Cunningham, a sophomore in there now, is there to make the tackle at the 28. And that will mean it will be second down and two yards to go for Ohio State as Jim kept the football and uh, ran with it. Now the Buckeyes trying to get it going. They go to the full house now on the two tight ends. They have Jake Owen Stora in there. And the handoff goes to Johnson, and he powers the left side. And he comes out across the 30 to the 31. And Doug Freiberg, sophomore tackle, takes him at the 31-yard line. First down, 10 for Ohio State. And they're going to try, I think, again here. They come up with one of their patented drives. 31-yard line, first and 10 in their own territory. Bobby Hyatt comes out wide right. Harrell is a slot back out on the right side. Johnson and Logan set in back of Pacenta. Six-man front up there against him. Pacenta rolling right and keeping the ball, and he is filled right at the line of scrimmage by George Washington, the nose guard, in there to make the tackle on the play. And it will be second down and 10 at the 31-yard line of the Buckeyes. They have a 9-3 lead, and we have 7 minutes and 9 seconds left to play in this third period. In the fourth quarter, Michigan leads Illinois 35-7, and in the fourth quarter, it's Notre Dame over Alabama 21-10. Second down, 10, 31-yard line. For center rolls left. He dodges right. He is going to fall down for a big loss. They get tremendous pressure. Ron Robel was the man who sent him on his way. Steve Medball helped, and he is thrown all the way back at his 16-yard line. They had been at the 31. Now it is all the way back at the 16-yard line. So with that loss, in a third down situation, they'll send Sladeni in to kick. It is third and 24. Sladeni has kicked four times, an average of 36 yards. And here he is now, standing back at his four-yard line to kick it. And Luckemeyer and Weber are the deep men back there for the Golden Gophers. And here's the snap, and Tom gets the boot away, and it is coming up. And a fair catch is taken at the Ohio State 48. The ball goes over to Minnesota, and they will have it at the 48-yard line of Ohio State, a 35-yard kick. The Golden Gophers with excellent field position here in the third quarter and trailing the Buckeyes by a score of 9-3. to three. Minnesota with a record of 6-3 and three on the year. The score, 9-3 Buckeyes, and action continues in 30 seconds. The officials took a timeout, and so Tony Dungy went over to the sideline to talk to Cal Stoll. Now he is coming back again. Minnesota has the ball at the Ohio State 48-yard line. It is first down and 10 to go. Ohio State is out in front, 9-3. to three. Now they send two men wide on the right. Mike Jones is one, Ron Coolis is the other. 
the eye formation. Tony Dungy, Dungy the quarterback. And he fakes, he fades, he's rushed. He is going to be sacked. Bob Brzezinski was the man who led it. Aaron Brown also in there on the tackle for Ohio State. They're getting an awful lot of pressure to Dungy as they did a year ago in Columbus when the Buckeyes won the football game 38 to six. And it's all the way back to the 43-yard line of Minnesota. That's the best way to keep uh, to keep that Minnesota area of attack calm. It's like at that good rush, which they're starting to do now. It looks as if the Buckeye defense might have uh, solidified a little bit. It's a little more aggressive going after them. Second down, 20 at the 43-yard line of Minnesota. And the Dungy again back to pass. Hard rush on him, but he gets some time and guns it up at the 48-yard line. Let's see, was it caught by Matthews? Incomplete is the call. The Buckeyes indicating he didn't catch it. He seemed to be in the act of catching it as he fell to the ground. And it is rolled incomplete, intended for the fullback, John, John Matthews, who has been uh, one of the prime targets for Dungy all season. So it'll be third down and 20 for Minnesota at their own 43-yard line. And Dungy has put that ball in the air quite a bit here this afternoon. Dungy, 8 of 19 for 127 yards. Here he is now in a third and 20 situation. Two setbacks are in behind. He goes back to throw. He looks left. He looks over the middle. He fires, and it is out of the hands of Mike Jones. Mike Jones, the senior from Detroit, was cutting across. He had been the man split left, and it goes incomplete, and another member of the... Minnesota team is injured down there down around the 38 yard line we can't see the number we'll see if we can uh, spot him for you momentarily it is Ken Wipazinski out of Green Bay Wisconsin who was injured on the play so now it's going to be a fourth and 20 situation coming up here for Minnesota and we have five minutes and nine seconds left to play in this third period Ohio State is in front nine to three I think this is about the uh, the type of game that the uh, coaching staff had expected they expected uh, Minnesota to play us tough uh, throughout the afternoon but I think uh, this is getting a little ridiculous now I think Tony Dungy although he is having a good day an odd statistic though Ken he leads the uh, Big Ten or he does not lead the Big Ten uh, in the uh, passing category, which you would automatically think he is fifth in passing and sixth in total offense in the Big Ten. Tony Dungy, the fine quarterback for Minnesota. And they bought, they just called a personal foul on Minnesota and have moved the ball back to the 19-yard line of the Golden Gophers. So that means they're going to have a fourth down. Would you believe? No, they're going to make it a third down. They did not use up the down. But it will be third down and 42. And uh, they're still attending to Ripazinski down on the field. And Glenn Borkwin has come in to replace him at tight end as he is now on his feet and being assisted from the field. The ball is back at the 19-yard line of Minnesota. Okay, it is third down at the 19-yard line. The line of scrimmage originally on this series up at their own 48, so they need about a mile. Here it goes, and it's a quick kick on a pitch back to Kitzman, and it's a good uh, artificial surface roll and is going down to the Ohio State 30. The quarterback took the ball, Dungy, and then he turned and gave it to Kitzman, who kicked it, and Mike Jones covered it down at the 30-yard line. That's a 50-yard boot. So... It will go to the Buckeyes, first down and 10 yards to go. Not a bad move under the circumstances for Minnesota. The ball is spotted at the 29-yard line of Ohio State. Uh, again, forgive us, but the sunshine makes it very difficult for us to pick up the yard markers here. First and 10, 29, and it is Pacetta handing off and running with the ball on a reverse play is Jimmy Howell, and he gets to the 30 and Keith Brown the strong safety who has 46 solo tackles and Steve Midbow in there on the stop on the play actually he lost as his knee touched back at the 28 so it is second down and 11 yards to go so 
Luke, some of the folks listening uh, on the network this afternoon, WLGN in Logan, Ohio, and WMVO up in Mount Vernon. Good to have you folks along with us, and hope we can bring you a big Buckeye win this afternoon. Second and 11 at the 28-yard line. Pitch out to Logan, and he is going to be bumped out of bounds. He faked it to Harrell on that reverse. Then a long pitch out to Logan, and he was sent out of bounds, and uh, he is back at the line of scrimmage at the 28. So it is third and 11. Ohio State having trouble moving the ball. Tom Luckemeyer was the man who sent Jeff out of bounds on the play. They send in Orville Gilmore again and take out the tiny end Merrill. So they have the extra deep man back in there with the, what they consider to be the passing situation. Herman Jones is split out on the left side, and Logan is coming out to the right as they go to a double wing setup now with Pete Johnson, the only man behind. The center goes back to throw. He fires down and out on the right side, and it's Logan who makes the catch, but it's out of bounds. It is out of bounds. It's incomplete. the kicking unit again will have to go to work at the 28-yard line of the Buckeyes. It is fourth down and 11. They have a 9-3 lead and they're getting all they can handle. Five punts for Tom Slodini today. His average is 36 yards and two men are back deep now. Luckemeyer and Weber are standing back at about the 35-yard line of Minnesota. At the 15-yard line of the Buckeyes, we have Slodini. Porter snaps it. No rush. He gets the kick away. It is a long high boot. It is taken at the 35-yard line by Weber. He's to the 40, and he is smacked down hard at the 41-yard line. Bobby Weber on the run back, and there to make the tackle on the play, Kelton Dantzler of Ohio State. A 37-yard kick, a four-yard run back. The ball is at the 41-yard line of Minnesota. The local fans are really into it now. They can feel that this team is battling here in this third quarter. Four minutes, four seconds left to play in this period. Ohio State is out in front, nine to three. They send Ron Coolis out wide on the right. Jones is split on the left side. Kitzman and Bro are the setbacks in behind the quarterback, Dungy. Dungy on a quarterback draw play to the 45, to the 50, and over to the 47-yard line of the Buckeyes. And Tom Cousineau makes the tackle. It was a quarterback draw. He started back. He kept the ball. He goes to the Buckeye 47, first and 10 for Minnesota. 50,000-plus on hand here for the last home game of the season for the Golden Gophers. As Bob mentioned, they close it out at Wisconsin. A lot of these seniors will never play here again, and they're ready for a second half of action, and the Buckeyes have their hands full. At the Ohio State 47, it is first down and 10. Tony Dungy, the quarterback, in the I formation, takes the ball. He gives it off, and it is Kitzman cutting in behind right guard and right tackle, going into the 41-yard line. Bob Brzezinski, Ed Thompson, making the tackle on a six-yard gain. It will be second down and four yards to go for Minnesota. At the 41-yard line of Ohio State, three minutes, 15 seconds left to play in the third quarter. 9-3, Buckeyes out in front. They're sending out Jones on the right side, and to the left goes Ron Coolis. They have one man set in behind Dungy. And that is Kitzman. Dungy takes it. Again, the quarterback draw. He is into the 35, to the 30. He is to the 29, to the 25, to the 24. Great running by Dungy. And the tackler is Tom Roach with Kelvin Dantzler helping out to the 24-yard line. And it is first down 10, Minnesota. They started back in their own 41-yard line. They went to the 47. They went to the Buckeye 41. They're now in there at the Buckeye 24-yard line. And it is first and 10. Again the eye, Dungy sending it back and running his throw over the left side, sweeping to the outside. Brzezinski gets him by the ankle, and he is taken down. Bob Brzezinski on the tackle. And let's see where the advance is from the 24. Give him a couple. Into the 22. Second down and eight yards to go, Minnesota. It doesn't look as if the Gophers are fading on us, Ken. Uh, they appear to be getting stronger, and they're doing a little more gutsy calling, particularly with the quarterback draw. And uh, they're playing some heads-up ball. They, uh, they smell the goal line. It is second and eight at the 22-yard line of the Buckeyes. Dungy goes back to throw it. 
He's looking. And he is hit. The ball bobbles loose. It is picked up by Bonamici. He has it on the fumble. He is running down the sideline to the 40, to the 30, to the 25-yard line and down. He fumbled the ball. He was not in the act of throwing. That was the ruling. No flags down. So Nick Bonamici has come up with the ball. Had he been in the act of throwing, it could have been an incompleted pass. Bonamici grabbed the ball after a tremendous rush, and the Buckeyes have it all the way down at the 23-yard line of Minnesota. So the defense has done the big job here, particularly that big guy up front, Nick Bonamici. And so at the 23-yard line of Minnesota, it is Ohio State, first down and 10 yards to go. And they're looking now to the sidelines toward Woody Hayes, and it looks as though he may be going to get a timeout. Great play by Bonamici. As Dungy went back to throw, he grabbed him, and the ball popped out. And as we said, had he been throwing it, and it is a judgment call, it could have been rolled in incompletion. No flags down. Bonamici just came up with the football and ran it to the 23-yard line of Minnesota. Out they come into the eye formation. Herman Jones is out wide to the right. The give is to Logan over the tackle. Sweeps to the outside, and Jones is taken at the 21-yard line. A gain of two yards on the play, and Ron Robles, the defensive right end, made the stop. It is second down and eight. That's the third week in a row now. The defensive unit has turned uh, a key interception, uh, has stopped a, uh, a very big drive by Minnesota. So the defensive unit is, uh, is, uh, gets those moments, those sparks when they... To turn the whole ball game around, Nick Bonamici just did it here, and the Buckeyes are moving. Second down, eight at the 21-yard line of the Golden Gophers as Pacenta takes to Johnson, sends it to Logan, sweeping right to the 20, into a swarm of tacklers, just inside the 20-yard line, leading the charge on the play, the defensive end on the left side, Mark Merrill for... The Golden Gophers. The ball is in at the 19-yard line. It is third down coming up. And about six and a half yards to go for the first down for the Buckeyes of Ohio State. And the clock shows a minute and 24 seconds left to play in the third quarter. And Ohio State is out in front here, 9-3. It's like they, uh, for a moment, thought they had an extra man on the field, Minnesota, but they don't. Carroll in motion to the left. The center's back to throw. He is rushed. He is going to be hit taken down back at the 35-yard line. It was Keith Brown along with Ron Robles, the strong safety and the defensive right end. And they got a great rush on him and threw him down back at the 31-yard line. That is a big, big loss from the 19 where it was third and six back to the 31-yard line where it is now going to be fourth down and 20. Fourth and 20, Sladaney from the 37-yard line will try a field goal. It is put down by Hyatt. The kick is in the air, and the 47-yard bid is short. Flying from the 37, the 47-yard kick is short, and it will go to Minnesota on their 20 as we pause 10 seconds for station identification. Serving you 24 hours. This is Ken Coleman with Bob Connors back here at... Minneapolis, Minnesota. The ball is at the Minnesota 20. It is first down and 10 yards to go. And the clock shows 28 seconds left to play in this third period. Minnesota's about ready to put the ball in play here. Ken, I want to mention something as soon as we get a playoff. Okay, it is Tony Dungy into his count. He's going back to pass. Looking and throwing up on the right side. It is short because of a great rush by Bob Radzinski. He really didn't get a chance to throw the ball. The uh, Buckeye coaches uh, at their press meeting this week, I think a lot of the, a lot of the people who go to the weekly press meeting listen to so much, uh, so many coaches' reports, and how many different ways can you be nice to an opposing team? And uh, I have some notes here that, uh, that the coaches uh, remarked about at the press lunch, and they said, this is a good team, hampered early in the season with injuries, and we will not take Minnesota lightly. Now, when you think of what uh, Minnesota has been, has been showing us this afternoon, although we might be eternally optimistic about the Buckeyes, you know, going 
uh, winning today and then beating Michigan on Saturday and then going on to the Rose Bowl. But we've got to get by these people first. And uh, although we might be optimistic, the coaches certainly were not optimistic about, uh, you know, about the kind of game that uh, Minnesota was going to give us. And they knew it was the final game of the year at home for a uh, great freshman class when they were recruited four and five years ago. And uh, they knew that we were going to have our hands full. Right you are, Bob. Uh, a timeout has been called for by Ohio State. And as we said at the very top of the broadcast today, football is an emotional game. But so often emotions are negated because both teams have them. And uh, today I have to say that this Minnesota team has shown a bit more of that spark. Although when the Buckeyes have been really put to the test, they have responded defensively and have done a splendid job holding this team to just one field goal. Now, it is a second and 10 at the 20, with 24 seconds left to play in the third quarter, as Tony Dungy brings his team out. Dungy takes it. He goes back to throw. He fires down on the right side, and it looks like it was caught, and it was at the 31-yard line, and a splendid catch was made out there by Mike Jones. Cousin O and Roach sent him out of bounds, but he made a beautiful catch and then stepped out of bounds. And it's at the 31-yard line, and that's a first and 10 for Minnesota. First down and 10, 19 seconds to play in the third period. They're sending Coolis out wide on the left. Jones is out on the right. Kitzman and Bro are the back behind the quarterback in the eye. Dungy fades to throw. He is going long downfield, and it is incomplete. He was looking again for Mike Jones, but back on the coverage that time, Allegro and Griffin, the two safety men for the Buckeyes, second down, 10 Minnesota at their own 31-yard line. Nine to three, Ohio State in front, 13 seconds to play in the third quarter. And Dungy is putting that ball in the air here in the second half of action. He is sending Coolis again on the left side. He has Jones split to the right. He is rolling back to his left a little and looking and throwing and hitting up at the 43-yard line to his tight end, Glenn Borkwin, who had caught nine passes before today. Borkwin, a sophomore from Cottage Grove, Minnesota, takes it at the 43, is hit by Allegro and Cousino, and that is a first down for the Golden Gophers at their own 43-yard line, Five seconds showing on the clock. It is starting to roll. I don't think we'll get off another play, and we won't. And so at the end of the third quarter, the score. Ohio State 9, Minnesota 3. This is the Ohio State Football Network. First down 10, Minnesota on their own 43-yard line as we open the fourth quarter of action. Ken Coleman reporting with Bob Connors. Tony Dungy hands it off, and it is Kent Kitzman, his fullback, who goes straight into the line from the 43 to the 45. Cousin and Beeman make the tackle, and so it will be second down, eight to go. This quarter is brought to you by Capital Financial Services. Call your nearest Capital Financial Services office to find out more about getting your loan application started immediately. The ball just over the 45 now. We have a final score, Michigan over Illinois, 38 to 7. That's the final. So the Wolverines are ready. And now, coming out wide to the right is Coolis. Split left is Jones. Dungy taking all the time he can on his counts. Going back to throw. Rolling right, throwing. Hitting. Hit at the 44-yard line of the Buckeyes. The catcher is Coolis. He is knocked out of bounds by Guest and Allegro. And so they continue to move that ball on the ground. That's a first down at the Ohio State 46-yard line on a 12-yard pickup. Dungy, before that play, was 10 of 24 for 149 yards. In the third quarter, the Buckeyes had the ball for 22 plays, Minnesota for 24. At the Ohio State 45-yard line, first and 10, Dungy gives it to Kitzman, and he plows for three into the 42-yard line. And Aaron Brown and Bob Brzezinski make the tackle on Kent Kitzman. As he goes to the 42-yard line, it is second down and seven. 
Other final scores in Maryland beat Clemson 20 to nothing. It was Pittsburgh over West Virginia 24 to 16. Notre Dame beat Alabama 21 to 18. 21 to 18. Okay, Bob, it's now Jones coming out on the right, and they send Kitzman as the only man back in. They move a slot back up on the right side. Dungy taking full advantage of those 25 seconds, goes back to throw, and fires it down the right side, maybe out of bounds. Did he catch it? Let's see. It is incomplete. The official, at first, not indicating. Dungy is up there to argue the call. It was intended for and caught by Mike Jones, but he caught it out of bounds, and Tom Roach hit him immediately. So it will go back. It appeared as if he called it a completion. Ed Thompson said something to him, and he changed his mind. And he stepped out away from the crowd of players on the sideline to clearly indicate that it was indeed an incompleted pass. So it goes back to the 42-yard line of the Buckeyes, and now it is third down and seven yards to go for Minnesota, and we come to a key play. They are sending Coolis out on the left. Jones is not in there at the moment. Roger Frazier is, and he is split on the right side. Anhorn is out there on the right. And back goes Sanji to throw it, and Tilton Dantzler has him for a loss. Dantzler raced him down back at the 48-yard line out of field goal range. So it is going to be fourth down coming up. He was rolling left, and Dantzler, who's made some key tackles this year for the Buckeyes, makes a very big one back at the 48-yard line to make it a fourth and 13. Outstanding pursuit on behalf of 6'2", 205-pound sophomore is doing an outstanding job this afternoon. Tolpin in there to punt. He's punted four times. His average is 40 yards. And he gets this one high in the air, and it bounces down around the 20, and is rolling and rolling and rolling, and is going to be down to nine. It is 9-3. Ohio State action continues after this from Capital Financial Services. The nearest office of Capital Financial Services. Back here in Minneapolis and on the first play, Ohio State from the nine-yard line, hand to Pete Johnson. He goes over left tackle in from the nine, takes it out to the 12, a gain of three. George Washington and Steve Stewart make the tackle. It is second and seven. Tobin's punt was for 39 yards. We have 12 minutes and 19 seconds left to play in this game. Ohio State leading nine to three, and it is showtime. They better do it now. Into the eye formation. And the give is to Logan. Over the tackle comes to the outside of the 15, to the 17. And he is nailed at the 17-yard line on a good hard stop. And in there on the play, Steve Stewart, the left linebacker, who had 53 solo tackles going in. The ball at the 17-yard line. And so it is third down now. And about two and a half yards to go for the first down for the Buckeyes of Ohio State. Jones brings the play in. Now he goes out wide to the right. Johnson sets up in front of Logan. Harrell is the wing back on the right side. And it is given to Logan. He's up the middle. He powers his way. And they may have to measure on this one. He takes it out to about the 19. And great second effort by Jeff Logan. May have got them the first down. Maybe they'll have to measure. It is at the 19. And they're coming over to the sidelines. And they are going to pick up those chains. This is going to be a gimme. Yes, indeed. It is close. A fine second effort by Logan going right up the middle. And Bill Lukens is standing there and looking. And they didn't get it. Short. They're short by a half a yard. And in comes Sladini. So it is fourth down and in inches. And Sladini is going to have to kick it for the Buckeyes. With 11 minutes and 16 seconds left to play, Ohio State is out in front, 9-3, to three, and we have a cliffhanger going here this afternoon at Memorial Stadium in Minneapolis. Back in the deep position, Tom Luckemeyer and Bobby Weber, and standing at his five-yard line, Sladaney, with an average of 36 yards on six punts. He has the wind behind him a little. He kicks it. It goes to the 40. Luckemeyer takes it there and is hit at his own 42-yard line. And making the tackle was Doug Porter on the play. And it will be first down and 10 for Minnesota. This quarter is being brought to you by Capital Financial Services. Check the white pages of your phone book for the office nearest you. 
40-yard kick by Slidaney. So Minnesota on their own 42-yard line, trailing 9-3, to three, with 11 minutes and 2 seconds showing on the clock. Go to the offense once again. Tony Dungy has one man, Kitman, set in behind him in a double-wing setup. He has Coolis out to the right. He has Mike Jones to the left. He takes it on the quarterback draw and comes from the 45 to the 46. Starting on the 42, he kept it as he did very nicely in the third quarter a couple of times. And on the draw play, Ed Thompson was there to make the tackle for the Buckeyes on the gain of four to the 46. It is second down and six yards to go for the Golden Gophers. They have won six. They have lost three. And they're putting on quite a battle here this afternoon with the Buckeyes. It is Jones to the left. Now they go to the T formation. Matthews and Kitzman are set in behind Dungy. Dungy goes back. He rolls right and throws. He hits Kitzman at the 50-yard line. He's over to the Buckeye 49. And Mike Guest takes him down at that spot. At the 49-yard line of Ohio State, it will be third down and one. Third and one. The ball is almost at the 50, so it's about a yard and a half to get. And now they're taking out Allegro. They're taking out Aaron Brown. They're putting in Byron Cato. And they're putting in another defensive man and the person, I think, of Mark Sullivan as they look for the short yardage play. Power eye now for Minnesota. Dungy into his call. He gives it to Kitzman. He goes high in the air, leaping up the middle. And they'll have to measure to see, and I don't think they got it. Kitzman just went hurtling into the line. He looked like uh, Sam Cunningham. And uh, they may have to measure again. It is possibly going to be brought in from the sideline. They're bringing it in now. And they did not get there. It is going to be fourth down and inches to go now. A different situation. The Buckeyes were on their 19. Now the Minnesota Golden Gophers are on the Buckeye 48. So it looks like they'll go for it. They really, of course, have nothing to lose in doing so. And that is the case. They are going for it right now. They come out. They have Kitzman. And they have the uh, Perkins in there in front of him. And the handoff goes to Kitzman, and he drives for the first down. He goes to the 45-yard line for the first. And so Minnesota keeps the ball. Nine minutes, 19 seconds left to play. Ohio State is out in front, nine to three. Minnesota 15 first down, nine in the second half. Ohio State also with 15 first down in this game. Mike Jones comes out to the right. Coolis is out on the left. Again, it is the I formation. Tony Dungy makes his call. He hands off, and it is Kitzman again. And from the 45, he gets a yard, maybe a couple, before he is taken down, going over left tackle. And Aaron Brown is there to make the stop for the Buckeyes and make it second down and eight yards to go for Minnesota. Second and eight for the Golden Gophers, and we really have a nail-biter going here this afternoon. Again, they send Coolis out on the right, and Jones, both of them threats for the deep throw. Out on the left goes Jones. Back goes Dungy to throw. Hard rush. He fires downfield. He hits it. Up at the 33-yard line. The catch was made by Coolis. The tackle was made by Guess as he was going out of bounds. And they have moved it in to the Ohio State 33-yard line. First and 10 for Minnesota. First and 10 for the Golden Gophers. 8.23 left. Buckeyes lead it 9-3. It's at the 33-yard line of Ohio State. And Minnesota is bringing it to them here. They got one great effort from Bonamici to break up an earlier drive in the third quarter. But here comes Minnesota again in the fourth, moving relentlessly onward. At the 33-yard line, first and 10. And the give is to Kitzman. He comes up the middle. He doesn't get much room, but he gets three yards. He goes to the 30-yard line, and Bonamici takes him down as he went into heavy traffic, going straight on. Tony Dungy coming into today's game can need to just 59 yards to pass Harry Gonzo of Indiana and reach fourth place in the all-time Big Ten list for all games. His uh, 
record of 3,226 passing yards, 10th tenth be tenth best in the Big Ten. He's just 99 short of Purdue's Lenny Dawson. And now Jones and Coolis both go wide to the left. And they have Bobby Holmes, and he is a slot back on the left. As Kitzman is the sole man behind the quarterback, Dungey. And the give goes to Kitzman, and he drives again. And he gets short yardage from the 30-yard line into the 27. He got three. Nick Bonamici again on the tackle. It'll be third down and four. Aaron Brown was there to help out. The clock moves onward. It's down to seven minutes and eight seconds. Left to play in this game. Ohio State is out in front. Nine to three. Again, they send two men wide to the left in Jones and Coolis. Kitzman is the front man on the eye. Back of Dungey. The quarterback into that long count that he's been using for most of the game. And now he goes back and rolls left to throw, fires it, and it is caught down there on the 15, but out of bounds. Caught it out of bounds. Mike Jones caught it, but he was out. And so it will be fourth down four at the 27-yard line. Dungey now looking over toward Cal Stoll and the assistant. And let us see what Minnesota is going to do. Dungey this afternoon, 13 of 28 for 177 yards. And uh, would he try the quarterback draw? It worked for him very successfully twice in the third quarter. Once in this fourth quarter, he sends two men wide to the left. Again, Jones and Coolis. Two setbacks in the tee behind him. Dungey takes the ball. Or will momentarily. He's going back to throw to his left. He fires it, and it is incomplete. Incompleted pass. They got great pressure again. And Kelvin Dantzler was the man who got the pressure in there. And Bonamici knocked down the football. And the Buckeyes of Ohio State, with 6.39 left, will get the ball again on their own 27-yard line, first and 10. This quarter is brought to you by Capital Financial Services. Call your nearest Capital Financial Services office to find out more about getting your loan application started immediately. The score is 9-3, Ohio State leads. Action will continue after this from Capital Financial Services. This is Ken Coleman along with Bob Connors, and we're watching the Golden Gophers of Minnesota against the Buckeyes of Ohio State. 9-3, the Buckeyes lead. 6-39 left to play in the game. The officials just had a timeout. Jim Placenta went over to the sideline to talk to Woody Hayes, and he comes on. And this is, again, the time when Ohio State would like to have one of those clock-eating drives if they can come up with one. But the Golden Gophers have been tough on them defensively today. Placenta brings them out into the eye. Johnson is in front of Logan. Six men fought against them with the linebackers in tight. Reverse play to Harrell. He tries the left side, and it's thrown for a loss. Back at the 25-yard line is Ron Robo. The defensive end did not budge and took him down. It will be second down and 12. Three first downs in the second half for the Buckeyes in the, in the second half of this game. 23 yards they have been able to pick up. That should give the folks some indication of, uh, of what the Minnesota defense has done to us. They've shot us off outside. We've had a brief spurt through the air, and that's about it. Second down, 12 at the 25. Pacetta lost the ball on the handoff and fell on it right at the 24-yard line. He was starting to withdraw and uh, suddenly dropped the ball and fell on it at the 24. So now it is third and 13. Third and 13, and Pacetta is looking over to the sideline. Bobby Hyatt is waiting to, uh, well, it's German Jones now bringing the play in on the sideline and they're using up some time here they better get it going in a hurry five minutes and 30 seconds left to play they have two men wide to the right jones and harrell the center gets it he hands it off and it is logan coming up the middle he's out to the 30 the 35 to the 38 first down jeff logan with a big play ron robel was there to make the tackle but logan came up the middle and sprung it and brought it out to the 38 on a third and 13, he went 14. That's the first, uh, I don't want to say big run uh, that the Buckeyes have been able to come up with today, but as far as Jeff Logan, uh, 14 yards, I've got to believe, is as long as gainer of the day. They've really shut us in. 
Well, it was a key, key play right here at the 38-yard line. First down, 10. And Percenta fakes and keeps. He goes over the right side and gets to the 40 on a gain of two. He had faked to Pete Johnson. He went to the outside. He had Logan behind him for the option, but he kept the ball. And he got just a couple of yards, and Mark Merrill made the tackle. Logan, 28 carries, 115 yards on the afternoon. At the 40, it is second down and eight, and we have 4.40 left to play in the game. Ohio State is in front, nine to three. On their own 40-yard line, they send Herman Jones out wide on the left side. Again, it's the I formation with Pete Johnson in front of Jeff Logan, the center of the quarterback. He has it, he gives it to, he fakes it to Logan, he keeps the ball and gets it to the 42. Looked like he messed up or somebody did on the play. He faked it to Johnson, then to Logan, then started forward. He got it actually out to the 43-yard line. Mark Merrill again is on the tackle, and that makes it third and five for the Buckeyes. So once more, they're in a key possession situation. The clock showing exactly four minutes, and Ohio State is calling for a timeout. The score, Ohio State nine, Minnesota three. Action will continue after this from Capital Financial Services. Okay, we're back here at Minneapolis and Jim Pacenta over to the sideline. It's at the 43-yard line of Ohio State. The Buckeyes have third and five. The clock shows exactly four minutes left to play. Nine three Buckeyes in front. So let's see what they're going to come up with here, if anything. They were saved a moment ago on a third and 13 when Logan lugged it 14. They send two men wide to the left, Harrell and Hyatt. The center is ready. He's rolling left with the ball. Flag down. He is up to the 45. He's to the 50. He is over into Minnesota territory, but let's see what the penalty marker is about. Illegal procedure, Ohio State. Illegal procedure on Ohio State. Woody Hayes gesturing from the sideline, and the ball will go from the 43 back to the 38. And it will be third down, ten. Third and ten for the Buckeyes as a legal procedure is called. And Herman Jones now is coming in with a play. That would have been a first down. But a legal procedure was called. Should Ohio State win this afternoon, the Buckeyes will assure themselves of an unprecedented fifth straight Big Ten championship. Michigan's won or shared four straight on four different occasions. But no club has ever won or tied for five straight. And a win today gives OSU no less than a tie. Running with the ball is Logan. And he takes it to the 43-yard line from the 38. And that is not going to be enough. It is going to be a fourth and five situation for the Buckeyes at their own 43. And so with three minutes and 27 seconds left to play in this game, Tom Cladini is coming in to do the kicking once more for the Buckeyes. Going back deep. Alone is Bobby Weber, 36-yard average on seven kicks for Sladaney. He stands at his 29-yard line. He gets the snap. There is no rush. With a wind at his back, he powers it. And it is going on into the end zone. A tremendous kick by Sladaney, a 57-yarder. And so, Minnesota, on their 20-yard line, will have first down, 10 to go, with three minutes and three seconds left. And Ohio State leading by a score of 9-3. to three. So the pressure now goes on the Buckeye defensive unit, and they have had to come up with the big plays here in this game, and they have done it. They have held this team to one long field goal when it's counted. So here they come. Tony Dungy, the quarterback, in the I formation, has wide receivers left and right in Jones on the right side and he fires long down the middle and it is incomplete he was looking for Borkwin the tight end who was upended down around the 47 yard line the fans think that interference should have been called but the ball was way overthrown Allegro was the closest man to the football but fans thought that Borkwin had been interfered with we pause now 10 seconds for station identification Serving you 24 hours a day. This is Radio 93, W-E-O-L, in Illyria. It's 4.30. Second down and 10 at the 20-yard line of Minnesota. Tony Dungy in his final game at home. Into his count. 
takes the ball and goes back. He looks. He fires up the middle. He hits Kitzman at the 30. He is hit immediately at the 31-yard line. And the tacklers, Cousineau and Thompson. And that should be enough for the first down. And so he keeps it alive up at the 31. First and 10, Minnesota. Two minutes and 48 seconds showing on the clock. 9-3, the Buckeyes out in front. They have Ron Coolis out wide on the right side. Dungy is back and throwing. He sends it up the middle. It is incomplete. He was looking for Kitzman and again overthrew. And the closest man was Ray Griffin. Second down, 10, Minnesota at the 31-yard line of the Golden Gophers. When the Buckeye defense has been susceptible to the pass this afternoon, it seems to be those mid-range passes of, uh, of 10 to 15 yards right up the middle. Dungy has not been successful with those long ones. Now he sends Coolis out wide right. Jones is split left. He's back to throw it. He fires down and out on the right side. Caught at the 33-yard line by Kitzman. Lunging and falling as he caught the ball. So the gain is only a couple. And Allegro covered him, although he just went down anyway. So it is third down, eight. This quarter being brought to you by Capital Financial Services. Check the white pages for the office nearest you. 2.17 showing on the clock. Dungy back. A big play now. He fires it. He hits at the 47-yard line. And the man who got it was Coolis. At the 47, they keep it alive again. On a third and eight at the 33, they hit to their 47. Tom Roach makes the tackle for Ohio State. Two minutes, seven seconds left. 14-yard gain. Okay, it is Dungy again going back to throw. He is looking. He is rushed. He finally fires it, and it is in and out of the hands of Borkwin. The intended receiver, the tight end up on the left side. They got a crush to him, and at his own 47, he now has second and 10. Allegro and Cousineau back on the coverage. One minute, 55 seconds left to play in this game. Ohio State is in front, 9-3. to three. To give you an idea of how close this game is, the Buckeyes with 16 first downs, Minnesota with 17. OSU with 236 yards, Minnesota with 242 yards. Second down, 10 at the 47-yard line of Minnesota. Dungy again with the two wide receivers in Coolis and Jones. He takes it in fade. And he is rushed. Aaron Brown got him first. Eddie Beeman on top behind him. And they take him down all the way back at the 32-yard line. And that is a very, very big play. A 15-yard loss will make it third down and 15 to go for the first down. A minute and 35 seconds left to play in the game. And they got the pressure to him that time. Now again, a timeout is going to be called by Minnesota as he was getting ready. The score is 9-3, to three. Buckeyes. And action will continue after this from Capital Financial Seconds to go, a minute and 33 seconds. The Buckeyes are leading the Gophers of Minnesota, 9-3. to three. A key sack by Aaron Brown, I should say just about everybody in the defensive front four, have put the Golden Gophers in a tough situation. With more play-by-play, -play, Ken Coleman. Okay, Bob, and it is third and 22 with the ball back there at the 35-yard line. Dungy, 16 of 34 for 203 yards. So here he goes with this one, and I imagine they go for both if he doesn't make it on this try. Dungy back, looking, fires it downfield, and it is incomplete for Borkwin. Glenn Borkwin, the intended receiver, and Tom Cousineau doing a great job covering as a linebacker. He got some help. Tom Roach was in the area, and that makes it fourth down coming up at the 35-yard line of Minnesota and 22 yards to go. Fourth and 22. We have not seen Tobin go into the action. They are going to go for it in this situation. With a minute 23 left to play, why not? Back goes Dungy. He's looking. He fires way downfield, and it is incomplete, and the Buckeyes played it smart. 
Tom Roach was the man closest to the ball. Ray Griffin was alongside, and they didn't get to Roger Frazier, the intended receiver, and they purposely did not, of course, intercept under those circumstances. Usually, you will play to intercept, but not that time. One minute, 15 seconds left to play, and Ohio will have it at the 35-yard line of Minnesota, first and 10 for the Buckeyes now. And they have been through the grinder this afternoon as they get ready for the Wolverines at Columbus next week. Here they come into the full house tee as they have Jaco and Stora in there. And it goes to Pete Johnson, and he grinds it a couple of yards from the 35 into the 33. And Bobby Weber takes him down there at the 33-yard line. It will be second down and eight. And the clock shows one minute and one second left to play. And it is moving along now. It is under a minute to go. And the Buckeyes ought to be able to run it out here. Pacenta looking over to the sideline. And I imagine they're just going to stick to that full house robust tee. And just give it to Johnson or whatever. Pacenta may even be keeping the ball himself. We're down to 40 and on to 39. Pacenta in his call. He turns. He hands it to Pete Johnson. Flags down as Pete goes into the 32-yard line. A gain of one on the play. A flag down as Mark Merrill was in there to make the tackle. A couple of the uh, Golden Gophers seem to be uh, jumping offside on that play. And so we'll see what the call is going to be. It could be that they were uh, indeed jumping offside. 53,190 have watched quite a football game here this afternoon. It is five yards on Minnesota, and the ball goes into the 29-yard line. That makes it second down. Coming up now, and four to go for the first down. 33 seconds left. This quarter has been brought to you by Capital Financial Services. Call your nearest Capital Financial Services office to find out more about getting your loan application started immediately. Okay, it's at the 29. It is third down and four. Second down and four make it. They do not use the down, of course. Second and four, full house tee, tight end. But center falls on the football right at the 30-yard line. So he actually lost one, but that could be the last play. Probably is. We're under nine and we're counting. And uh, now, let's see, the officials seem to be calling for a timeout here. Minnesota has called for one with five seconds showing on the clock and the ball at the 30-yard line. Minnesota has called a timeout. So the Golden Gophers of Minnesota this afternoon, with five seconds left, trailing the Buckeyes of Ohio State. And so Ohio State has had all they could handle. And uh, Minnesota has every right to be proud of the effort they have put forth today. And we might add that Ohio State has a lot to be proud about, too, as they get ready for the battle with Michigan coming up next week. They are about to win for the third time in their history, 17 consecutive conference games. And they are about to win an unprecedented fifth title as Pacenta falls on the ball at the 32-yard line. And it is over. And Ohio State has won it by a score of 9-3. to three. That's the end of the game. Again, the final. Ohio State 9 and Minnesota 3. And we'll return with a final summary after this from Capital Financial Service. Well, I guess that describes it just as good as you can because the Buckeyes of Ohio State have escaped. That would be the way to put it here this afternoon as the Golden Gophers of Minnesota gave them a handful. A 9-3 Ohio State victory. A 39-yard field goal by Tom Spladini. And then Jim Pacenta's wrapping up a drive on a broken play, going over to cap a 72-yard 16-play drive late in the second quarter after there had been a 49-yard field goal by Rogan of Minnesota. So, Bob Connors, we saw a defensive unit that seems to be getting tougher and stronger as the weeks go along come up with the big key plays in this afternoon's game, holding an aroused team to the one long field goal and coming
coming up with key defensive efforts. Had not Nick Bonamici intercepted that ball with two minutes to go in the third quarter, uh, no telling what might have happened. That certainly was a key interception uh, by Nick. A lot of aggressive line play this afternoon, and you can't, you can't uh, really, you can't really say that it was uh, uh, a, a defensive victory for us or a defensive victory for Minnesota, no matter whether it's score one or loss. But it was a. Uh, one team would get a drive going for uh, maybe uh, two or three series, and then bam, they shut the door on them. It would go back the other way, and bam, would shut the door on them. Whether it was a big play or a key play like an interception like Nick Bonamici's or what, but uh, I don't think either defensive unit spent much time uh, on the bench this afternoon. Just seemed to go back and forth, back and forth. The final score again, Ohio. Well, our coaches today, George Hill and Nicky Jackson, have come up into the booth. A couple of uh, fellows with big smiles on their face, needless to say, but I found a very poignant remark made by George Hill a moment ago. You just were downstairs, George, before coming up and shook hands, I understand, with the Minnesota quarterback. Yes, with Tony Dungy, Ken. He's a, we faced him four years. He's a great young athlete, a great credit to college football, and uh, I'm glad we don't have to face him again. He's a fine, fine athlete. Well, just before we took to the air, Bob brought out a very good point because he goes to the press luncheon each Monday that uh, sometimes, you know, you think that coaches say things to... Uh, well, just because they feel they shouldn't say uh, things about other clubs, but you fellas expected to get all you could handle, and uh, that's what happened here today, right? Yes, sir. They're they're a fine football team. They they've had injuries during the course of the year, and I don't think people really understand sometimes how much a key injury at several different positions can really make to a football team. But they got their great middle guard back, uh, George Washington, last week. And he meant an awful lot to their defense, and it, and it surely showed today in their defensive effort. They got uh, coolest. Their best wide receiver came back this week, along with uh, Bobby Holmes, their tailback. And uh, those are really fine football players. We felt that uh, Minnesota had two excellent wide receivers and a great quarterback. And uh, with Holmes coming back uh, at their tailback, uh, they're a very explosive offensive football team. And uh, I'm real proud of our defense. I thought we were in, in the pressure the whole second half of the ball game. We are on the wrong side of the 50 a great deal of that time, Ken. And, uh, and the kids just stuck in there. And then when they finally got down in there where it looked like it was getting kind of bad, Nick Bonamici, again, a great football player, came up with a big play for us, an interception or a recovered fumble in the air, whatever you want to call it, and ran the thing back and, uh, and got us out of a tremendous hole. Well, it seems as though you have fellows who have been doing that for you all year. Kelton Dantzler again today uh, seemed to come up with a couple of very uh, key plays with his fine pursuit. Uh, Tom Cousineau again. I mean, they just seem to, uh, they're, they're clutch players. Well, I think we've grown up an awful lot through this season. I'm sure, Ken, as you've witnessed our football team through the year, we've gotten better as the weeks have gone by, and I, I think this is uh, this is what we expected out of a relatively young football team to get better and get better and get better, and, uh, and here we are. We're down to the thick of it now. So uh, what are you going to do this week, George? Relax and enjoy yourself. Uh. <laughs> Again, we don't have many relaxing <laughs> moments in this this time of the year. You know, our, for a football coach, he lives his whole 365 days for those 11 Saturday afternoons. Indeed. And, and we're course. coming up to the 11 Saturday afternoon, and we're getting ready for this. And what a Saturday afternoon it should be. Ohio State and Michigan, no need to say any more than that. And George Hill, thank you very much. We appreciate your being with Thanks, us. Thanks, Ken. Thanks for having me. Okay, George Hill out of Bay Village, Ohio, has been uh, here with us. And uh, Bob Connors will talk with Mickey Jackson, and we'll have more in 60 seconds. This is Bob Connors back at Minneapolis, where the Buckeyes have beaten Minnesota 9-3. to Our backfield coach, Mickey Jackson, is with us. Co uh, coach, congratulations on the win this afternoon, and uh, how about a few words about our offensive unit? Thank you, Bob. Uh, I felt this afternoon we faced a great deal of pressure from the Minnesota defense. I think they did a fine job of coordinating the defense. Our biggest problem was that we were not consistent. I thought Jim did a fine job of handling himself in there. Uh, and, uh, but we'll just have to come back next week and start all over again and get ready for another big one in our final. Greg Storr took a shot earlier in the game, and I did see him back in, so apparently there was nothing serious. No, it wasn't serious, although, uh, again, they were giving us a great deal of pressure. He took a, uh, a 
great shot, and as a result, it affected him somewhat the rest of the day. He had a little trouble blocking down on the end. I would have to say that uh, the Minnesota defense this afternoon handled our wide game as well as anybody has this year. Yes, they did. Uh, what they were trying to do was take away our pitch. Of course, you know, Jeff Logan has done a great job for us this year of getting outside on the options, and they were taking the bound and determined to take that away, and they were forcing Jim to run the ball back up inside, and they were giving us pressure from outside in and also coordinating that with pressure from inside out to, to, to hold up to a little or no gain. Uh, Jeff was in with 121 yards on 29 carries, and he worked pretty uh, pretty much this afternoon. I assume that uh, uh, that there were no major injuries or uh, anything at all that you would could know of by now. No, no, no major injuries. We just uh, got a full day out of Jeff Logan. I think he carried the ball 29 times, but uh, again, he had over 100 yards and uh, did a fine job in there for us. What about Pete Johnson now? Is he? Uh... <laughs> Johnson uh, did a fine job. Uh, the thing that uh, you don't see or uh, is not notarized on there is blocking. And, of course, uh, in order for Jeff to get that uh, 121 yards, Pete has got to block for him. Okay, Coach uh, Mickey Jackson, uh, if you don't have any final comments, I know uh, you're not going to have much time to get your game face off this week and get next week's game face on again because it's the one that the season is all down to now. We're, we're in our... Uh, this will be our third season. We had the first season with Rod as a quarterback, the second season with Jim Pacenta in, and now this big game Saturday, it's all, it's all for the Rovers, right down at the game again. Yes, it is, and I tell you, we're, we're going we're gonna to put everything uh, together this week and in our efforts to, uh, to, to, to make this the greatest football game that we've ever played. We've got to do it this week. Coach Mickey Jackson, thank you very much, and uh, we'll look for you Monday at the press luncheon and, uh, and get the words there and see what you're going to tell us about Michigan. Thank you, Bob. We'll be back in just 60 seconds. Some of the final statistics from the Buckeyes' 9-3 win over Minnesota this afternoon. The Buckeyes with 16 first downs, uh, 79 passing yards. Jim Pacenta was 6 for 12. Tony Dungy was 16 for 38. And the one key interception by Nick Bonamici that kind of turned it around with less than two minutes to go in the third period. That was a key defensive move for the Buckeyes. Uh, Jeff Logan with a strong day. 13 carries uh, for 40, or wait a minute, Jeff Logan's 29 carries for 121 yards. Pete Johnson only 13 carries, 44 yards. So by and large, it was a, it was a standoff from one, uh, from a defensive standpoint, one defensive unit complementing the other defensive unit. The Buckeyes did get the big break with a field goal early in the game by Tom Sladaney. And then a touchdown on a broken play, Jim Facetta, five yards, the point after was blocked, and that was about the way the scoring went for the Buckeyes. There was no scoring in the second half. As the stage is now set, hopefully the Buckeyes come out of this without any injuries and will be able to give it a 100% effort, and will be ready to go next Saturday for the game. The review of today's game has been brought to you by Capital Financial Services and Motorists Insurance Companies. Ohio State football is presented on WEOL by Julian W. Perkins Incorporated, Nielsen Jewelers and Lorraine, by Serta and Illyria City Furniture, and by the Vermilion Auto Dealers. Statistician Tim Holycross, spotters John Anderson and Gene Warman, and producer Dave Parr, and a special thanks to our pilots Dale Ward. This is Bob Connor. The Ohio State Football Network is a production of WTBN Radio Sports, Columbus, Ohio. Play-by-play -play and color announcers for today's game were chosen by WTBN Radio in conjunction with Ohio State University. Join us next week at home for Ohio State versus Michigan. We'll be on the air with the Woody Hayes Show at 1220. Again, the final score of today's game, Ohio State 9, Minnesota 3.